Bom dia, buen dia, buongiorno, bonjour, guten morgen, calimera, sabahul khair, jaweju. Good morning, dear sisters and brothers from all over the globe, and good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the opening event of our ecumenical season of creation. It is a joy and honor to welcome you as we come together this year to pray and act. Inspired by this year's theme, listen to the voice of creation. I am Susana Moreira, speaking to you from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, on behalf of the Ecumenical Steering Committee. And we would like to thank you all for being here at this special time. Season of Creation is a truly global and ecumenical time. And for us to be connected worldwide at this special service, it is being live streamed in English through the Season of Creation channels. And it is also being live streamed with simultaneous translation in different languages available through the Season of Creation official website. As you join us, please write in the chat box your name and where you are joining us from. That way we can feel how truly global and wide our celebration today is. We also invite you to write your prayers in the chat box during the moment of our intercessory prayers. We have been living the preparation for the season since January this year. And now we finally come to the celebration that begins today, the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, and ends on October 4th, the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. In the name of the Ecumenical Steering Committee, I would like to give a special thanks to our dear ecumenical faith leaders who are participating in this opening service today. Reverend Dr. Dave Buchlis, His Eminence Metropolitan Job of Pisidia, Reverend Ed Brown, Dr. Celia Dean Drummond, Reverend Christian Krager, Metropolitan Seraphine Kikotis, Bishop Graham Usher, Sister Alessandra Smerelli, Reverend Anne Burghardt, Dr. Paolo Uwechi, Bishop Yvette Moses, Reverend Tony Franklin Ross, Bishop Mark Andrus, Reverend Dr. Chad Rimmer, and Dr. Luke Andrianos. Thank you all for being here today and helping us celebrate this special time as an ecumenical family. And now we invite Luke Andrianos and Athena Peralta to bring us a greeting from the World Council of Churches Assembly, currently meeting in Karlsruhe, Germany. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Warm greetings from Karlsruhe in Germany, where the 11th General Assembly of the World Council of Churches is taking place. It is a true blessing, but could also be the last divine call for ecological repentance to all churches and to all of us, that the, this opening of the ecumenical prayer for the season of creation coincides with the General Assembly of the WCC. We gather in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of the Earth and all creatures. Praise be to the Holy Trinity. God is sound and life, creator of the universe, source of all life, whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. Good whose love endures forever. Greetings to you, sun and moon, you stars of the southern sky, 
Give to our God your thanks and praise. Sunrise and sunset, night and day, give to our God your thanks and praise. Greetings to you, mountains and valleys, grassland and scree, glacier avalanche, mist and snow, give to our God your thanks and praise. Greetings to you, cowrie and pine, ratta and cowhai, mosses and ferns, baobab, finbos, yellowwood and aloe. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Greetings to you, dolphins and kahaiwai, sea lion and crab, coral, anemone, peepee and shrimp. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Greetings to you, rabbits and cattle, moths and dogs, kiwi and sparrow and tui and hawk, elephant, lions, rhinos, giraffes, ostrich, sheep, cattle, scorpion and dung beetle. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Greetings to you, men, women and men, elders and children, women and men, diverse cultures of this rainbow land, typists and teachers, cleaners and clerks, learners, job seekers, TV and sports stars, all who care, who love and who pray, who laugh and who learn, who rest and who play. Give to our God your thanks and praise. And now we join together in this reading of Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word in scripture. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the earth. Listen to creation, tell of God, listen to God's word in scripture. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing to the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Listen to creation, tell of God, Listen to God's word in scripture. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decree of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word in scripture. Together, we profess our faith in the triune God, who creates, reconciles, and sustains all that is seen and unseen. We believe in God, who creates all things, who embraces all things, who celebrates all things, who is present in every part of the fabric of creation. We believe in God as the source of all life, who baptizes this planet with living water. We believe in Jesus Christ, the suffering one, the poor one, the malnourished one, the climate refugee who loves and cares for this world and who suffers with it. And we believe in Jesus Christ, the seed of life, who came to reconcile and renew this world and everything in it. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who moves with God and who moves among and with us today. We believe in everlasting life in God, and we believe in the hope that one day God will put an end to death and all destructive forces. Amen.
We remember the fruits of the earth for sowing and for harvest. Remember the dew of the air. Remember the downcoming of rains and the waters and the rivers. Remember the plants of the plants of the year. Remember the safety of humans and of animals and of me, all of us who commit in ecological sins. For the Holy Trinity, who brings us to perfection and safety and peace, forgives us our sins, brings us up according to their measure, that we may grow and prosper through your grace, who makes the face of the earth to rejoice, waters her furrows, lets her grain be abundantly multiplied, and makes ready her seed time and harvest. We give you thanks. Share this litany of lament. We light candles to represent the voices of indigenous people, women, and biodiversity. God of our vibrant world. You have given humans the responsibility to care for each other. Indigenous people have historical, spiritual, and personal ties to these lands on which we inhabit. But many of us have failed to recognize the presence of God in these traditions, and their voices have been silenced. We are thankful to indigenous nations for their continuing care and presence on the earth. We all value the resilience and strength shown through the generations and today. We turn to the spirit who dismantles borders and celebrates life-giving community. Help us make a place where everyone is welcome and we acknowledge your grace at work in the ways of one another. Together, may we learn the spiritual richness of our relationships in the web of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of the whole creation, you have created land and trees, animals and all living creatures on the earth. We are destroying the forests through poisons and logging. The voices of the birds, insects and forest dwellers are silenced. You created the wonders of the ocean, the fish, shells, reef, whales, waves, corals. The oceans are warming, and as they drown in plastic, their voices are being stilled. We turn to you in sorrow and repentance. Please help us to care for the oceans, the land and the forest, and to recognize that it is your blessing for us. Creation is speaking to us but their voices have been silenced by the roar of our greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mothering Earth, our sister, you sustain and govern us. We have silenced the voices of your people, especially the voices of women, protectors of the earth who have been killed by land grabbers mining companies and oil companies. Many are the voices of our sisters who have been silenced by flooding, hurricanes and drought as the earth warming brings destruction. May we listen to the voices of our mothers and sisters and learn to treasure and protect the web of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to you in sorrow and repentance. Please, Creator God, 
forgive us for the human activities which have overpowered the weather and caused destruction of our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What have we done? Sends an from our desire to turn into in, upon ourselves, refuse to hear the voices of our co-creators, call us again, open our ears, gather us into relationships of mutual care and listening, enlighten us by your spirit that renews the face of your earth. Amen. Hear now a reading from Exodus, chapter 3, verses 3 through 7 and 12. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up, so Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. 
And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I have heard them crying out. And God said, I will be with you. Here ends the reading. And friends, now we will hear reflections on our theme, Listen to the Voice of Creation. The Orthodox Church was a pioneer in addressing the environmental crisis since the 1980s. This led to the establishment of 1st of September as a day of prayer for the protection of the natural environment in 1989. In the very first patriarchal encyclical issued that year, the late ecumenical patriarch Demetrius of blessed memory asserted that the church could not remain indifferent before the ecological crisis and called all those entrusted with the responsibility of governing the nations to act without delay, taking all necessary measures for the protection and preservation of natural creation. The Ecumenical Patriarchate has chosen the beginning of the new liturgical year, the 1st of September, as the day of protection for the environment, when prayers and thanksgiving are offered to the Creator for the great gift of creation, as well as supplications for its preservation. Its coincidence with the time of harvest underlines how much we owe to our Creator and how we should be thankful to it. Ecumenical Patriarch Dimitrios's encyclical prophetically noted that the root of the ecological crisis was consumerism, based on increasing desires and lust. In response, to a such a deviation in human attitude towards creation. In order to protect the gift of creation, Orthodox theology calls humanity to develop a Eucharistic spirit and an ascetic ethos. By Eucharistic spirit, we mean to be always thankful to God for the gift of creation. By ascetic ethos, we imply moderation, sobriety, and self-control in using natural resources. Human beings should not consume by impulse or beyond the limits, but rather manifest a sense of frugality and abstinence from certain goods. The ascetic way of life promoted by orthodox theology and spirituality suggests moderation to the practice of fasting, among many other things, as well as by cultivating a sense of solidarity with the entire creation by sharing goods with the others. To conclude, I would like to quote a significant paragraph from the encyclical of the Holy and Great Council of the Orthodox Church, which gathered in Crete in 2016, which admirably sums up the Orthodox approach to the care for creation. Here I quote, the roots of the ecological crisis are spiritual and ethical, inhering within the heart of each man. This crisis has become more acute in recent centuries on account of the various divisions provoked by human passions, such as greed, avarice, egoism, and the insatiable desire for more, and by the consequences for the planet, as with climate change, which now threatens to a large extent the natural environment, our common home. The rupture in the relationship between man and creation is a perversion of the authentic use of God's creation. The approach to the ecological problem on the basis of the principles of the Christian tradition demands not only a repentance for the sin of the exploitation of the natural resources of the planet, namely a radical change in mentality and behavior, 
but also asceticism as an antidote to consumerism, the deification of needs, and the acquisitive attitude. It also presupposes our greatest responsibility to hand down a viable natural environment to future generations and to use it according to divine will and blessing. End of the quote. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, sisters and brothers in Christ. I'm very grateful to join this service to mark the opening of this year's season of creation. May we unite in contemplation and care for our common family and our common home. In thinking of our reading of today, uh, two very related expressions came to mind. The first one is take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And the second, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I've heard them crying out. These two expressions recognize that the earth is sacred, that it is God's presence. And at the same time, a knowledge and hear the cry of its people. These two expressions represent a synthesis of the encyclical letter Laudato Si. Listen to the cry of the earth, listen to the cry of the poor, which is the same cry and which is, which means, which means listen to the voice of creation. As warning signs of the ecological crisis continue to ring loud, walking a synodal path is the way of an ecological conversion. Synodality is not limited to human walking together, but interspecies walking and dwelling together within ecosystems in a way that reciprocates respect and upholds the integral dignity of all things. We can now therefore speak of the need of synodal ecological conversion. We must urgently change how we relate to everything. We need to set aside our comfortable ways of being, attending to our desires and move to what God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are calling us to do. May this season of creation bring us the courage and creativity we need to work together, care for our, all our relationships and work in a collaborative way. May we radically love and listen diverse people and the diversity of creation. Thank you.
Good morning. Good afternoon. It's great to be with you all today as part of this very special service to mark the beginning of the season of creation. And it was very poignant just listening there to the voice of a bird species that is now extinct in the wild because of human behavior. Last week, I visited uh, Arrocha France's site in the Alpes Maritimes in the south of France, where we help care for and protect 600 hectares of upland uh, nature. It's an area that is terribly affected by drought at this present time. And I spoke to one of my French colleagues, a scientist and biologist working there, and she talked about her grief, her sense of lament at the friends that she had lost. And I quizzed her a bit more about this, and she said, yes, I mean my non-human friends. I mean the amphibians, the insects, the birds, the animals, the plants that we have lost during this terrible, terrible drought that so much of Europe has been suffering from this summer. And then she went on to say to me, why is it that when we train pastors and priests, we teach them from the Bible, we teach them from Christian tradition, but I've heard that God has given us two books. God has given us both scripture and nature, both the Bible and creation. Why in training pastors and priests do we only teach them from one book? We should teach them to listen to the voice of creation as well as to God's voice through the scriptures. And I was struck and challenged by her words, and I believe they are deeply true. In the book of Job, chapter 12, from verse 7, we read, But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. In our work with Arosha, we try to do good science, to study nature, to study what's happening with the world, to study climate science, conservation science, and base our work on that. But one of the problems with the Western scientific tradition is that it turns to, tends to turn nature into an object that we study. And today we need to recover that alongside the study of nature, we need to also recognize that God's creation, the nature that we are surrounded by, is not just an object, it is a subject. It is, as St. Francis would have said, our brother, our sister, our mother. We are in relationship with these parts of creation and their cries need to speak to us. In the book of Romans chapter eight, we read that creation is groaning as it waits for its liberation to decay. And today, as we listen to the voice of creation around the world, we need to listen to its groaning. We need to allow ourselves to be humbled, to allow our emotions to be touched. We need also to listen to its praise and worship, even in the midst of distress. And we need to listen to its advice, to its voice. We need to listen to the lessons that God has written into the creation that will help guide us as together we seek to address the multiple ecological crises that we face that have become a crisis of our own existence. Within my own tradition, I'm an Anglican priest, but I'm also involved with the world evangelical movement, with the Lausanne movement. And sometimes my sister and brother evangelicals have been very poor at caring for creation. And I was really encouraged just this week to read that in the US, the National Association of Evangelicals has just released a new report, loving the least of these, addressing a changing environment. And we need to do that. We need to care for the least of these, our human and non-human sisters and brothers, whom God created, whom God cared for, whom in Christ are part of God's plans for redemption. We need to listen 
to the voice of creation. Thank you. Jason Singh is a musical artist. During a 12 month residency at the Dartington Trust in the UK, Jason decided to collaborate with an ancient yew tree that's located on the campus of Schumacher College. The tree is estimated to be between 1,500 and 2,000 years old. A yew tree is an awe-inspiring celebration of time, resilience, and the enduring wisdom of a co-creature who has something to tell us if we know how to listen. Jason listened by recording the electrical impulses from this tree on the 14th of November in 2021. He connected it to a MIDI sprout device that translated those impulses into musical notes. So friends, as we listen to the voice of creation, hear now the song composed by our sister, Yu Tree. What do you hear her saying? We take time for prayer. Loving God, help us to provide refuge to every kind of animal and plant with whom we live. Help us to be attentive to all that you have made. God, in whom crea all creation subsists, help us listen as you do. Loving God, when Jesus cried out and gave us his spirit, the earth shook and the rock split. You are known by the whole of creation that listens to you. God, to whom all creation responds. Help us respond to you. To you. Loving God, Help us hear and know you just as the earth rocks too. Help us to live from the way in which we see creation. Recognize your glorious beauty, God, to whom all creation responds. 
Help, help us to know you. Loving God, you are present in your creation and seek to heal her wounds. You can be found walking in the garden. Open our eyes to see you, the gardener, God who is present with your creation. Help us, uh, be, help us be present to you. Loving God, we often abandon your creation and cause its wounds. Help us to follow in your footsteps and learn to walk in the garden like you. God, who is present with your creation, help us, help us be present, present to too. Loving God, who hears every voice, knows each cry of injustice and is attentive to the suffering of the earth teach us to listen bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it that we may listen to the world you have created and not close ourselves off from it reveal to us the ways in which we have failed to hear your voice in how we treat the earth. God, who listens to every living thing, help us, help us listen, listen as you do. You do. Amen. Amen. Good and loving God, we give thanks for the community that is gathered online from around the whole of our common home. And so we invite you, friends, to type your prayer request into the chat box as you're watching either on YouTube or on Facebook, and we'll collect the prayers of those who are gathered in this global community, of those who are nurturing their vocation to care for our common home. And as we collect those prayers, we remember the voices of the Spix McCall. We listen for the voices of the humpback whale. We open the ears of our hearts to the wisdom of our sister, Yew Tree. With Jean-Paul, we pray for those that feel not wanted for those that are disappeared and those that are facing execution or loss of life. With Julie Reyes, we pray for the ecological conversion in the hearts of all. With Luis, we pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us. With Reba, we pray that the season of creation will be a time of prayer for the conversion of many. With Judith, we pray for an end to the destruction and disintegration of our planet. <coughs> With Nancy, we pray for the people of Pakistan as they confront this terrible climate disaster. With Mary, we pray for all who are working in the fields and the harvest and for all who live close to the earth. With Igora, we pray that we may listen deeply to each other and to the ever still small voice, and sound and movement in creation. With Peter, we pray that COP27 will take loss and damage seriously and create concrete mechanisms to implement steps towards climate justice. With Nue Ni Moe, we pray, Lord, may we listen deeply, deeply to the voice of creation with our loving, attentive hearts. With Simone, we pray for all that suffer that they may feel the healing touch of our loving creator. 
in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. With Terence, we pray that each of us would honor, protect, and nourish one another in our universe, in all of our interactions. With Rachel, we pray, may the voices of our young people from Africa be heard at COP27. With Carrie, we pray, let us listen to all the voices of creation, including the voices of the unhoused, all who are in need of prayer, the dislocated, and the indigenous. With Benedict Dayori, we pray for climate refugees all over the world. With John, we pray that humanity would respect and adore all living creatures. With Rose Chimpango, we pray may the Holy Trinity guide us to focus most to the cry of creation as people are dying silently. Lord have mercy. With Ginelli Novello, we pray for the protectors of our common home. With Jerome, we pray for peace in places where there is war and conflict. And with John, we pray that the seeds of eco-conversion which have been scattered may bear fruit and let us have hope. And it's in that shared hope of our one calling to till and care for creation that we collect these prayers, all those that are coming through the chat box and all those that remain in our hearts around our common home. We give thanks and offer these prayers to you the Holy Three, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And now friends, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, each of us praying in the language of our hearts. Notre Père, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre, Comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour, et pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi que partiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire, au siècle des siècles. Amen. If we are in Christ, we are becoming a new creation. We see God around us. We see God within us. We give thanks to our creator. Let us show the caring nature you have instilled within us by greeting each other as a sign of God's justice, of peace, love, forgiveness and grace. The peace of our Creator be with you in all things. Love for with you. And now may God who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church and your church to listen to the voice of all creatures that reflect God's glory in creation. In the name of God the Father and our Creator, God the Son, our Redeemer, and the one by whom all things were created, and God the Holy Spirit who empowers us to listen to, to love, and to care for his creation. Amen. Friends, on behalf of the Ecumenical Steering Committee, we thank you for joining us as we open the season of creation 2022.
Our common prayer and action can help us listen for the voices of those who are silenced. Remember the individuals, communities, species, and ecosystems who are lost. Amplify those whose livelihoods are threatened by habitat loss and climate change. And center the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. We invite you to visit our website, seasonofcreation.org, and download this year's celebration guide that has resources for eco-spirituality, ideas for campaigns and advocacy, and liturgical resources like this ecumenical prayer service that you can adapt for use in your parish. And we encourage you to create a burning bush to include in your worship or your events. And when you do, please register your event on our website and share your pictures on social media using the hashtag season of creation so that we can share the mosaic of ways that we strive to listen to all creation, calling for our ecological repentance. So may this season of creation renew our ecumenical unity, renewing and uniting us by our bond of peace in one spirit and in our call to care for our common home. May this holy time of prayer and action be a time to listen to the voice of creation so that our lives and words and deeds proclaim the good news for all the earth. Happy season of creation, friends, and be inspired by this song by Zotobi as we go. Between the dying and being reborn, I see what is and I see what could be. Can't close my eyes again and go back to sleep. Days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide. How can I change our course? Just a lonely voice. Wish I could lose myself in all the noise. But if we are who would rise a generation proud with a mighty song we could turn this world around around so through my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turn of the tide. Through my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide. Ancestors, I'll be high, and before me, every child. I bring the power of a long broken life. So, when our time is through, I want to know did what we came to do? For the future ones so in our darkest days may we all be strong and give our lives so light may go wrong 
Fill my days with blessed unrest And my nights with dreams of justice Make me a vessel Fill my days with blessed unrest And my nights with dreams of justice Make me a vessel For the turning of the tide Fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice Make me a vessel for the turn Make me of the time Fill my days with blessed unrest And my nights with dreams of justice Make me a vessel for the turning of the tide